Now for etouffee, you're gonna want fresh garlic, bell pepper, onion, green onion, celery, bay leaves. I'm trying to make sure I have all, I have some fresh parsley that's just, you know, at the end. But I have my shrimp, like I said earlier, I have my shrimp um, tails. They're more so just the shell. I have them boiling with a little seafood seasoning as well. That's gonna be a stock that I add to my etouffee. For these, you're gonna want them diced. Now, if you're using frozen vegetables, I would say estimate to where you're only using one, one, one. So we're gonna make a pretty decent, we're gonna make a pretty decent pot of etouffee. So about a family style pot, I have a pound of shrimp, and about two 24 ounces of, what do you call it? Um, of course, crawfish. So since these are long, we're gonna slice these long ways and then dice them short. My cutting board is new. I'm blessing it. It's my first time actually using this one. I've been receiving so many like new branded you know, logo items. Thank you guys, you guys are the best. Thanks for supporting. Now, I'm not gonna bore you, but again, one onion, one bell pepper. I might do two green bell peppers, but a red bell pepper, this one's pretty big, but I'm gonna use the whole thing. You don't wanna put your green onion in the actual pan until your sauce is already at a simmer. You don't wanna cook green onion too long. You wanna put that at the very end. Um, I also have some dried shrimp. Now, sounds weird, but I want more of like a seafood, seafood flavor. So with the shrimp stock, I have a little bit of tomato paste and a little tomato sauce. I went full blown Italian. I don't really like the tomato sauces that come in the cans that aren't, I don't, I don't want to discriminate, but yeah, I want, I want it to be as close to fresh as possible because I'm not actually cutting and pureeing my own tomatoes. I want them to be fresh. And I don't like frozen vegetables. I've already told you guys I don't, I don't like frozen vegetables. Now again, we're gonna chop and dice everything. I'm gonna get our, our pan ready. I have a pretty big, you know, I wouldn't call it a pot. I have a pretty decent sized pot. I'm gonna add one whole stick of butter and then a half. So about, um, depending on your size of butter, mine are short, so I'm using actually two. So I'm gonna use two of those and let that butter simmer all the way to where it's completely melted. And then I have my flour. I'm gonna create a roux, and in that roux, I'm gonna add a little tomato sauce. Now, it sounds a little weird, but it'll all come together. We're gonna make us a nice, authentic Creole crawfish etouffee. Now, we're starting our roux base for our crawfish etouffee. I have some butter in another pan. This butter is just for, I'm gonna put a little heat onto my shrimp and crawfish before I actually add it. Now, let that go. Once the butter is completely melted down, you're gonna add a little flour. Now, how you make roux depends on how you were raised. I've seen a lot of people make their own little like slurry. If you're afraid to actually put the flour in the pan, my suggestion is get you a cup, get you some water, add flour, get it to a decent little size and then add it like that. It is easy as hell. Now, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon at a time just to make sure that I get it all the way around the pot. So, that's one. Make sure all your flour is covered with the butter. This is two. Now you're also gonna season, you're also gonna season your mix. You're gonna get a good, good root. See those vegetables? They're gonna soak up a lot. So go in there and you're gonna see it forming. 
I like my roux to be darker in an etouffee. Like, if I make an etouffee, a lot of times it might look like a shrimp creole because I'm making it a little bit faster than I usually would. But if you have enough time to make you a deep dark roux with your veggies, I have garlic, celery, everything's freshly chopped. Let's see, garlic, celery, bell peppers, onions. Let's get a little bit. That's our third. Now, I think we're good at about three tablespoons. The most I'll add to this is about another one and we'll be all right. So I'm gonna let those simmer down and I'm gonna get my shrimp. I have a pound of, it's, I believe they're jumbo. Jumbo and they're clean. Make sure you clean your shrimp. I do not wanna see unclean shrimp ever. That's nasty. In an etouffee, like if I make an etouffee, a lot of times it might look like a shrimp creole because I'm making it a little bit faster than I usually would. But if you have enough time to make you a deep dark roux with your veggies, I have garlic, celery, bell peppers, onions. Let's get a little bit. That's our third. Now I think we're good at about three tablespoons. The most I'll add to this is about another one and we'll be all right. So I'm gonna let those simmer down and I'm gonna get my shrimp. I have a pound of it's, I believe they're jumbo, jumbo and they're clean. Make sure you clean your shrimp. I do not wanna see unclean shrimp ever. That's nasty. Out, out, out. <laughs> you know how, many, how much accidents cost when we have to live record? It's somewhere that's thousands of dollars. <laughs> Oh, trust me, I know. All right. I want to get a little bit thicker than that. But when I add my stock, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going, you see recording? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get a thicker paste. And with this paste, I'm gonna add some tomato paste. I found this really cool tube of tomato paste. You get a tomato base, when you do an etouffee, you don't want it to taste like tomatoes because then there, it'll make it a Creole. We're not doing a Creole, we're doing an etouffee. So, again, I always add a little bit at a time because if you go in there and you throw a whole cup, you'll have a whole clump of actual flour in your pan. This is looking good. I'm gonna let that cook down a little bit more. You can use the same spoon because, hey, your shrimp are actually going in your etouffee. Once your shrimp get cooked on one side, you're gonna top that off with your crawfish. I know the crawfish are already cooked. I bought them frozen. I have two packs of the 16, oh no. Two packs of 24 ounce. It's crawfish etouffee. The shrimp are just for me being nice. Ooh, let's get in there. Yes, that looks so good. You want it to cook down just a little bit more. So let me show you. I'll add because you, some of your vegetables are still kind of chunky. You want them to get translucent now. Translucent now, I'm messing up. Look, your onions are already cooked down. Make sure that your celery and bell pepper follow suit because you don't want the chunky vegetables in there. Now that's good. All right. It's the same if you were to make a roux for, I'd say a gumbo. Only thing is you're using butter, you're not using a vegetable oil or whatever type of oil you use for your gumbo. So we're gonna let that cook down just a tad. Add our crawfish on top of our shrimp. That is a lot of crawfish, but that is gonna make it season up so good. Now that we've let our veggies kind of saute down with the flour, this will be your base for your roux. I've let the shrimp and crawfish kind of come to a little small simmer. I drained our shrimp heads and shells. And now I have the water. Now this would be considered seafood stock. You want to get it a little higher. I turned it down. Same thing, not all at once. You kind of want to drop it in there slowly. Let it mix around. You're gonna do about half. That's seafood stock. 
Now you're gonna create a roux. I say that's my bad. That might be a little bit more than half, but it's fine because all of it's gonna go in there after the fact. Now I have, I don't even know what any of this says, but it's tomato paste. You're gonna add about, I do have my measure. Let's see. This is about a teaspoon. Therefore, you don't have to add that many of your tomato sauce. Mix that around, make sure you get that good, good, good. Make sure that tomato sauce is being all the way through. Now also add your seafood. Now once you get that seafood in there, you're gonna add the rest of, look at that. It's not even done, and that looks amazing. Add the rest of your seafood stock, shrimp stock, seafood stock. You can even use fish stock. Now, if you have some fish stock, don't ask me how you're gonna get some fish stock. I have a lot of island people that I know, their fish stock comes from the fish head. So, whatever that you have that gives you that good hint of seafood flavor, I'm gonna give you a trick to use. First off, I added my garlic already. Now my seasonings, I use my everything spicy, garlic lovers and everything. Everything is kind of like what you would use, like your season all. Continue to stir. You're gonna take your, this is like tomatoes, but very, very small like dice. But they're not the can of diced tomatoes. Don't use diced tomatoes. I'll give it about two tablespoons. I don't want it to have a tomato flavor. I like my etouffee to taste like seafood. Now you're gonna let this get to a simmer. I'm gonna add some green onions. Now these will be dried shrimp. I add dried shrimp to my gumbo. When I make gumbo, I've always, I used to watch my grandmother, it'd be one of the last things, right before she puts filet, she would put dried shrimp in her gumbo and I never understood why until I grew up and had to make my own and was like, what am I missing? What am I missing? I don't have a, that certain flavor. It's dried shrimp. You're not gonna use all of them. You can give yourself about, about a handful. I have a small hand, so trust me, a little goes a long way with dried shrimp. But you're gonna thank me because you're gonna be like, I never thought of that, I never thought of that. Get you some green onion, add that in your pot. If it's not the color that you want, if you think you wanted a little bit more of a tomato color I don't really care for that but hey if you want that color I'll add another to give you that look now you're gonna add two bay leaves your bay leaves will come out later and green onion about a man's handful so about two of my handfuls of green onion that green onion goes in last because you still want it to you don't want them to turn into a mush if they cook too long they turn into like they would look like spinach in your pot but you still want them to have their shape let that, let those bay leaves get in there real good. Again, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and add another tablespoon. Hell, maybe two. That was about one and a half. One and a half tablespoons, so all together, three and a half, four would be at best. You're gonna get that color. Once that color starts to come in, we're gonna cover it. You're gonna let this simmer you're gonna see that etouffee come to life. Now this is homemade etouffee. I've seen a lot of boxes, they come in, it's dried vegetables, dried seasoning. Everything has been sitting in a package forever. Why not make it at home? It's cheaper, it tastes better. Um, this will feed quite a few people. Like if you had this, this will feed quite a few of family members. So for a good 25 bucks, 30 bucks, you can feed a lot of people, you can have a party off of this. I'm going to cover our etouffee. I'm gonna plate our rice, and I'm gonna get us some garlic bread together as well. Let that simmer, I say about 10, 15 minutes, come back, stir it, don't let it get to a complete boil, turn it down to about a medium low, and let that cook. Now this is just regular parboiled rice. I made an entire bag. I like rice, we, we use rice for breakfast, we'll eat it with eggs. Um, we just eat a lot of rice on things. Rice, rice will go with any meal. So it's no big deal. If you made too much, trust me, the etouffee is gonna go fast and you're gonna be like, damn, I didn't make enough rice. So, let's feel that. And 
We're not gonna overflow it. We're gonna go ahead and put the remaining of the rice back on the stove. It's not on, but hey, there we go. We're gonna take our etouffee. Be careful, it's still hot. Make sure you put it on a flat surface that can take a little heat. Have some fresh parsley here, our rice. Now, this is our etouffee. That looks amazing. Now you can one by one scoop it out. I'm gonna do that because I don't wanna burn myself because it is still hot. We're gonna serve it as if, you know, we're at a family reunion, I guess. Um, little by little. Our bay leaves are still in there, being that our pot is still hot, leave those in there. They're still gonna be seasoning your food. Check out that a pay. What I did do is I started to blacken just a piece of regular like catfish. We're down south, everybody eats a lot of fried fish. I love blackened food. All right, we have our rice, our garlic bread. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys the tricks to my garlic bread. I know it sounds weird, but if you're slow on time and you kinda want some quick garlic bread, spray. Spray, spray, spray. Spray your bread with your butter spray that you would use for pancakes or whatever. Take your regular, you can use garlic powder with a little fresh parsley seasoning or any kind of Cajun seasoning and blacken them on both sides. Make sure you cook them on both sides and spray as much butter as possible. That's my trick. We're gonna top with fresh parsley. Hell, we can put a little bit on the rice. It's no big deal. Y'all aren't gonna eat it anyway, right? Now you have crawfish, shrimp, etouffee, garlic bread, parboiled rice. I am going to grab some more spoons. I'm also gonna grab our stuffed salmon that we made a little earlier. And I blackened a piece of catfish. I'm going to plate a little bit of the rice with the etouffee and the catfish on the same plate. Now we're gonna take about a spoonful, ladle full, whatever you wanna call it, of the etouffee and put that right on top. Look at that. And if you're gonna plate that, get the fuck. If you're gonna plate that, get some of the extra parsley that was over there, put it on top and voila. Crawfish and shrimp etouffee. Cooking like Cali style, you're gonna get you some bread. That is perfect. All from scratch, no powder base, nothing. We're eating food from scratch. Throw all that extra stuff away. Our etouffee is done. We have blackened fish. We have some blackened salmon over there. You could even try the etouffee on top of the blackened salmon. I wouldn't because it's already stuffed, but hey, you get hungry enough, you'll try anything. Again, that's garlic bread, etouffee. You don't need all that extra green stuff on top. You got some fresh parsley, and we are done. Thank you again for tuning in to Cooking Like Callie. Once again, we are on every Thursday. Tune in for new videos, new recipes. Message me, let me know what you guys want to see me cook. I'm back, and I'm not going to go anywhere. Good night. All right, we're done. Now y'all can talk. <laughs>